Good morning to you. It is Sunday, July 3rd. I'm Ainsley Earhart filling in for Allison this morning. Today's the day. We're going to be spraying some Q on a little later. Hey, thank you so much for waking up with us on Fox and Friends this morning on this Sunday morning. Let's get right to the Casey Anthony murder trial we've been talking about. The closing argument set to take place later this morning in Orlando. Joining us is Anna Siga Nicolazzi. A to be a very intriguing day. It is. This is a big day. All right. So let's let's start with the defense. What can they do? Is there anything they can stress? Off the table now? I don't think... Uh, the, perhaps the lying of her mother on the stand, Cindy. Might she face perjury charges? Hey, hey listen, I want to make an example of each and every one of you yeah. that does something wrong. Perjury charges against Cindy Anthony. I don't think you do, and this is why. Yeah, I think she's guilty of perjury, and I think the... This, it seems that it's now being painted as an accident spiraled out of control started as this accident and then it just went way beyond what they had anticipated. Does the jury buy that argument from the defense? I can't. We have deliberations. How long do you expect that to take? That's a tough. Summations go according to plan and the judge gives them the charge. It's going to take him a while. Here. What's your close? What are you here? focusing <laughs> on? Let's examine George Anthony about the molestation. So that's out, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I think they realize. They Great to have you here, Anna. All right, Thanks, let's Anna. switch now to talk a little politics. Senator Marco Rubio down from Florida, extremely popular young man. He is not happy with the president yesterday in his Saturday radio address. Of course, he also reiterated what he had said on Wednesday. So the narrative is unfolding now, and you're starting to see that. Shona Goldberg writing a piece the other day about this, saying he started to see this class warfare narrative playing out. Marco Rubio uh, had this to say about President Obama's apparent class warfare stance. Take a listen. I remember Vice President Biden yesterday in Las Vegas, or Friday evening in Las Vegas, but we... Republicans say... Why are we even talking about raising taxes with this bad economy? Things are so bad for people out there. It's the worst time to raise taxes. Well, and certainly when you look at the polls, we had a Marco Rubio to be the vice presidential nominee in 2012. Meanwhile, the presidential field getting even more crowded on Saturday. Uh, I think we're now up to 10 running for the Republican <laughs> I've nomination. Lost count. I have lost this count. one, though, you may not have heard of on Saturday. Didn't make a whole lot of news in the national scene, but Thaddeus McCotter. Governor Huckabee's not going to run. We need a guitar player in the running. So I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. <laughs> it's amazing, though. Repub I mean, uh, a Republican, yes, but representative. Not really Michigan. well known outside of Michigan. It, it, is, it is funny. You know what I think it's happening also? A lot of people just want their names out there. They don't, they might know they don't have a chance. They're going to be bottom of the list, but they want their names out there maybe for a run in the future. I mean, but he's hey, only 45 years old. Let's remember Bill Clinton. Panel in just a couple of minutes, but first the headlines. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Americans being urged not to cross the Mexican border into the city of Nuevo Lum, threatening to kill American DEA agents, was found outside of a school in Ciudad Juarez. And a brief security scare at Camp David, where President Obama is spending part of his 4th of July weekend. A small plane had to be escorted by a fighter jet after flying into restricted airspace about six miles from the president's retreat. Authority for IMF head Dominique Strauss-Kahn is being hounded now by the paparazzi after his release from house arrest. Photographer Johnson, at least one person, an 11-year-old little girl was killed. Great message there for our troops on this uh, 4th of July weekend. And you can go to Facebook and the Support Our Troops there link, and you can join up and uh, become a part of that group as well. So That's thanks. That's great. Yeah, and happy 4th of, of July to all of our troops uh, yeah. serving overseas. And imagine this, folks, if you were a family member of one of those troops uh, protecting our freedoms. Okay, you guys, when you get up there and you're giving the invocations, you can't use the word God. You're not allowed to say this at the funeral. You have to keep it separate. And here's what the cemetery has to say about this. They say due to ongoing... Okay, invoking the name of God or Jesus is not only... A you can't even say it? Anyway. Um, yeah, so they're outraged about this. The That's what they're suffering say, through. They're looking at a word and they can't say it. <laughs> saying, hey, if we say we, want, we are believers or our loved one that died was a believer, we want Jesus, we want the name God, whatever you in the ceremony, they're still saying it's not allowed. Oh, the idea of censoring a prayer this morning, because how did this ever sneak into the rules? Right. I mean, censoring a prayer, uh, needless to say, they are trying to take action here against the uh, cemetery's director, trying to change this policy. We'll have Father Jonathan Morris on later in the program to give us some perspective on uh, this and where the battle heads from here. Yeah, let us know what you think about all this. Friends at foxnews.com is how you can sound off and let us know. Also, we are on Twitter. We are FF Weekend is our Fox and Friends Weekend Twitter account. All right, let me tell you the rest of your headlines this morning. The river. 
It happened after an Exxon Mobil pipeline ruptured, releasing nearly 1,000 barrels of crude. The spill originated near the town of Billings and is now moving downstream. It lasted just three days. Three days is enough. Search crews finally located that female baboon that broke free from the Six Flags, the great adventure in New Jersey. The animal captured at a farm in Howell was tranquilized and then taken back to the amusement park safari for a physical examination. Now we're going to hand it over to Rick for our weather. Hey, Rick. Hey, guys. Some love and guys. Uh, pork barrel barbecue back all morning long. I'm going to try this. Ains, what's coming up? Bring it in, and I'll see how well it works throughout the day in New York City, okay? Thanks, Dave. Well, they get a tax break to attack. Well, the movie Black Hawk Down is about war and... Yeah. Well, uh, I was a sergeant in Somalia. I became an Army chaplain. July 4th, the weekend at least. Well, this weekend, I you have actually been to battle. There are a lot of people watching this morning, especially on Sunday morning, getting ready to go to church and you're a pastor. What's your message for them if they're facing battles in their life and how do they get through that? Yes. And thanks you're for serving our country. To be with you. Great it to see you. It was my honor to do it. <laughs> Great. Media Matters is attacking Fox News and they are. Good Sunday morning to you. It is July 3rd. I'm Ainsley, your heart filling in for Allison. Well, the box, we didn't here. notice. Dave was out by the smoker for a half an hour. I wonder where Dave went to. He can't. He comes back in. I'm like, something smells like mesquite in here. Who is that? Oh, that's yeah. Briggs. Two-minute segment. I come back 30 minutes later. Right? Yeah. And you said it's they've amazing. created a cologne that smells like bacon. It's for men and women. Because every man I know loves bacon. I got an idea. Would come what we'll do it. is we'll have you spray uh, Fifth Avenue and see if anyone even notices you. <laughs> Done. Could be the dress. Could be the scent. <laughs> sure, that wouldn't work. All right, let's Big talk clean. about politics. We've talked about uh, in the open there, Ainsley, you talked about Michelle. Bachman on her bus. Her uh, her bus rolls on into Iowa and uh, ahead of that key GOP straw poll. Where these candidates try to figure out how to get their message to resonate and for whatever reason hers is. A lot of women like her a lot because she had like 20 or 30 foster kids that she raised. Yeah, I think she and her husband, 23. I remember talking to her one day here at Fox and I said, um, could I come and interview some of these foster kids? I feel, thought that would be a great story. And she said, I would love for you to, but I can't put them on camera because I don't yeah. want their parents to, to be painted in a bad light, you know, because some of those were temporary situations. Well, she's hitting on some really interesting... As you might imagine, is in no hurry to raise the debt ceiling. Those talks continue as the president again sticks to August 2nd is a final deadline, but he needs this legislation to be prepared by July 22nd in order to avert some of the economic catastrophe we're talking about. And who's getting involved in this? Not as much the current, but the former president, now Bill Clinton getting in the game. And here's someone who knows some historical context. Remember that famous government shutdown? Who ended up paying the price? Republicans on all of that and that whole debate. And of course, Newt Gingrich ended up paying the price on that. President Clinton weighing in on this. He had this to say about, yeah, you exactly. remember, and that's one of the sticking points, right? Because that deficit commission, President Obama sort of didn't listen to them in the beginning. Exactly. But one of their things, in, whether it's Alice Rivlin or Erskine Bowles or anybody else on that commission. Reform. How is that going to happen? The the neither of them are talking touch. about. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The Republicans have said absolutely not. We're not voting for it. If their tax increases. Yeah. That's why they haven't gotten anything done. Let us know what you think about it. Friends at foxnews.com. We're going to continue to talk about that this morning. And now for the rest of your headlines. Closing arguments set to begin in the Casey Anthony trial this morning. Special celebration taking place at Fort Campbell this holiday weekend. I'm going to toss it over to Rick for the weather. Hey, it to me recently that in Phoenix at this time of year, it's like standing underneath a hair dryer for the whole summer. Is that mm. kind of accurate? putting your head in the oven. <laughs> Rick's from Arizona, so he knows all yeah, about that. I am. This is a rough week. They start to uh, drop those temps about 8 to 10 degrees today, so down to 109. Looking pretty good. All right, thanks and Rick, yeah. they were skiing in Colorado yesterday. Uh, so Snow many places skiing. out west ended their ski season yesterday. It was, a base this week. Skiing, 1,500 people. Well, let's hope the weather doesn't worry out this morning. If this doesn't outrage you, I, I think this should, perhaps we should outrage all Americans. Harvard has just released a new study about 4th of July parades. And it turns out, of course, something like this is so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, what a silly a safe study. Bet. What a silly study, though. Why don't we have to make this so political? It's a patriotic, it's very important weekend to celebrate our country as a whole, bipartisan. Uh, this outrages independence. This outrages millions of patriotic is, Republicans. But are there Republicans parades. this morning reading than others? I, I don't know. I, we're asking you. I mean, how do you take this, whether you're on the right, left, well, or the middle? When I'm at a patriotic parade, Fourth of July parade, I'm not standing on the side of the street thinking, she's a Republican, he's a no, Democrat. Red, white you're, you're it's not red pro-America. Absolutely. Yeah, there have been plenty of Democrats, there have been plenty of liberals, plenty of independents of no party affiliation who no fought. No question about that. It brings us all together. Who fought and died for this country, so Absolutely. it's ridiculous. Let us know what you think about it.
Friends at foxnews.com. <laughs> uh, and you can find us on Twitter as well, FF Weekend. All right, Coming up, the Justice Department, excuse me, Ains Clear CIA officers. My so, pleasure. Good morning. No criminal activity. What does this mean for Eric Holder? What are your thoughts? Well, there's a quote from the Justice Department. Mr. Durham has advised me asked you what this means for Eric Holder. What does this mean for these CIA interrogators and for the program as a whole? Is it redemption? Well, it is huge redemption. I mean, look, Eric Holder... Thing of the timing of it? It seemed kind of try to burying it on a holiday sure. weekend? Oh, yeah, it came out yeah. exactly as everybody was heading off to the beach for the 4th of July. Uh, the, yeah. the, there's no question that this was political timing as a result of magazine has this cover story in the current issue called One Document Under Siege. It's questioning... Magazine publishers to put images like that on their cover, I guess you might argue as well. Uh, Mark Absolutely. Thiessen, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Have a great 4th. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, Mark. Closing statements are just two hours. Beautiful montage there. You can go to Facebook.com slash support our troops. You can sign up, and I know thousands of you have already done that. So thank you so much. Yeah, Absolutely. all the freedom we celebrate this weekend, we do thank the troops for that. The red, white, and blue also evident on donuts this morning. You'll yes. see those at Dunkin' Donuts. They are okay. celebrating the 4th of July. And let's tell about everybody what we've got. We've got the Captain America donut. That's a jelly. The Stars oh. and Stripes donut. And the uh, Captain America. Oh, mm. There he goes. Um, the, yeah, so it actually has the different flavors inside of this thing. And the reason they're doing this is yep. because the, uh, they're actually supporting the troops by doing get the Captain America culotta. Dave, we're not going to have any camera and operators if you feed them donuts. <laughs> And it's gone. a mixture. You have all the different flavors. You know, normally if you get an IC, it's one flavor. You get all three in this. So what you need to do is you can go to Facebook. They're going to honor the military there. They're, they're doing a thing called America's Super Soldiers, like Captain America. And I was a comic book fan, of course, growing up. Still am. <clears throat> Don't hate to admit that sometimes. Captain America, the new movie, comes out very soon. So America at home. So That's great. Our thanks to Duncan for yes. now we don't have any Robbins. camera operators. <laughs> and they brought in coffee this morning, too. Their coffee is my favorite. Oh, it's it delicious. Is fantastic. Thanks, While Duncan. Drinking that. All right, folks, an interesting sleep study out this weekend for all of you folks that work so hard all week long and sleep four or five hours a night. Here's you the bad news. You wouldn't know anything news. about that, would you? No. Being a dad and working morning Here's the morning bad show. news. You can't just catch up, as you thought, on the weekend. You can't just get two solid good nights of sleep and reset. You need a lot more than that. Yeah, because we told you, even yesterday we were talking about, it's, it's you get less than seven and a half hours of sleep every night. Or you get a little cranky if you don't get enough sleep, yeah, too, right? Yeah, or maybe that's, I don't know, what's worse, of course, all these issues that we have with our health with not getting enough yeah. sleep. It's got a solid eight hours. Then the next week, they skimped out on a lot of their sleep, and then... The last few nights, they got 10 hours of sleep. And those two extra nights did not reverse any of the damage, according yeah. to the researchers. No, it needs to be consistent. What? That's when every day you need to go to bed at the same time every day. For those of us to get up at rains, Clayton's favorite part of this, new dads, it says women actually recover yeah. better mm -hmm. from no sleep than men do. So guys, when the baby's up in the middle of the night, you got to say, hey, hey now. we're just tougher. Right. That's what I gathered from that. That's why it's true. my favorite part of the true. study. I'm going to go deliver donuts. <laughs> Have fun. All right, let me tell you your headlines. Greece telling us about Arizona and the weather that they've seen there. My family's down in the south, and it's just scorchers every day. Dave said the, uh, they were out in there in bikinis, Rick, on the ski slopes. <laughs> All right, not a bad 4th of July, right? Yeah, exactly. Good way to Especially celebrate. Especially for the spectators. Exactly, or for the people on the lift along right. with them. <laughs> right, I can say the briskets outstanding. I'm skeptical of the queue. <laughs> no, 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 Dave, don't be so skeptical. <laughs> don't be so skeptical. Our, Our floor folks. director, Matt, uh, sprayed it on a little earlier, and I can't keep my hands off of them. <laughs> What's going on? Sorry about that, Matt. Coming up here on the show, don't mess with this mayor. Good Sunday morning to you. It is July 3rd. I'm Ainsley Your heart filling in for Allison. I'm grabbing them. They're walking by. There's one thing I'm unhappy about, though. It's I love the smell of barbecue. When they busted out this new cologne, though. <laughs> yeah? You're not a fan? Do you, know, called, do you know the movie Anchorman when they get where people it was, fleeing It's barbecue. The scene. <laughs> it's barbecue smell. That's what the, the, the spray is. They that's sold a, out of it, they said. They had to reorder. To barbecue. Yeah, they were selling out of it. To be honest it's with you, I didn't yeah. notice any difference. <laughs> Let's talk about politics this morning because Senator Marco Rubio is talking for the first time in a while. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard much from him as everyone else has uh, thrown their hat in the ring and had a discussion about President Obama and uh, what's going on with the debt ceiling. Well, the pr uh, president yesterday in the Sadio, Sadio, the Saturday radio, <laughs> I'm combining the two of them, <laughs> Saturday radio address had this to say, and then we'll hear from Rubio in a second. 
this a common narrative there about what the president is I laying do. out? That the rich are to blame for the mm -hmm. current situation? Okay. Right, because that Jets one is huge. We're talking about right. point. I mean, I just thought of this because I, saw, I read this about two weeks ago. Democrats received more money from rich donors. We're talking about. You make 250000 About half of that is given back to the government. Right, you're not struggling, but yeah. you're certainly Throw not Throw in a few kids, some yeah. college Small education, and yeah, you're done. Meanwhile, Michelle Bachman taking to the road this holiday weekend, heading to Iowa ahead of that key GOP straw poll. Of course, the Ames straw poll, which we've said is the first real marker, I think, in this election to see where people... That's what I'm hearing from all of my friends saying it's the economy that we need to improve, jobs sure. need, we need more jobs. So that's the question the GOP is saying. How do you want to raise taxes, President Obama, when our economy is in this state? Well, you play yeah. this narrative out, right? You're going to hear that. Meanwhile, the presidential field continues to get bigger. It looks like it's breaking down between you've got the Romney and the anti-Romney vote. Michelle Bachman won lobbying for that. And another guy throwing uh, his name into this, a name you probably haven't heard, Thaddeus McCotter. He oh. is a congressman <laughs> from Michigan, and he got in this. You know, he's a, he's a pretty funny guy. He also smart sends out. Guy. Yes, very smart guy. Any, uh, any reporters who cover him uh, for a long period of time, apparently, he'll mail them CDs of his rock and roll music that he. Middle of the night. I've yeah, heard he's that. The dry humor. But look, this is a tough field. You've got folks that are national figures like Tim Pawlenty, like John Huntsman. We could go on and on that are struggling to get name recognition. Administration will dump information on. Years old. He might just be putting his name out there, putting his hat in the ring. Um, um, just so that people will be familiar with his name and then he can run at a later date. True. Could be. You know, four years from now. All right, next uh, we have your headlines, the rest of your headlines. Americans being urged not to cross the Mexican border into the city of Mens. All right, thanks so much, Ainsley. Let's check in with Rick Reichmuth now for a look at your 4th of July break. <laughs> thanks, Rick. Coming up on the show, it's almost time for closing statements in the Casey Anthony. Closing arguments are set to begin in just about an hour in the Casey Anthony murder trial. I take the stand at all because now the waters are muddied and there's enough reasonable doubt there for the jurors to say, we don't know because it's so muddy. And you disagree. You have actually a number of points oh, that you think that she did not address and by not taking the stand. On the screen, just as you were as you were running down that larger theory. Of Since, and I'm hearing this from a lot of people that we've interviewed about this. If she's a mother and she's accused of murdering her child and she's truly innocent, wouldn't you take the stand to explain where you were and, uh, you know, the car smell and all that? Of that? That is exactly the face when a lot of people mm. would have been crying and in tears. James exactly. Curtis, I'm sure you will be watching this today with bated breath, and we appreciate you joining us this morning because closing arguments. Mission to attack Fox. Invocations when they're at the ceremony, at the, at the ceremony there, at the. And from the VA, quote, invoking the name of God or Jesus is not. A sure. Is that acceptable? Well, hey, listen, if the deceased. I know a lot of people. I honestly, my faith is very important to me. I wouldn't want a funeral if you can't talk about my faith. You know, that's who, that's what I stand for. Well, it's, uh, that's why I continue to stay on this story. Father Jonathan Morris, thanks for My being pleasure. here. Happy thanks, 4th of July. Thank Happy you. Beautiful little montage there. For more information on how you can post pictures of your loved ones serving overseas and just make some comments about our brave men and women in uniform, go to facebook.com slash support our troops. That's the page there. You can do that. Share videos as well on Facebook. Yeah, and don't forget to keep those troops on your mind when you're at those parades today, tomorrow, celebrating the 4th of July, watching those fireworks and some news this morning that might surprise you when you're out at those parades. Look around. Is this an indoctrination? Really, we have, do we have to make this partisan? It's a patriotic day, making us all unite as America. Yeah, thanks, Harvard. <laughs> right, they probably check. use stim stimulus money, too, right? I wouldn't doubt. I mean, we, we, they got to pay for it somehow, right? <laughs> right. The rest of your headlines. The African Union is... Thank you, and I'm on my way. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Rick. Check out these thighs. <laughs> no, no, these, these are chicken They're thighs. They're amazing. They're thighs. amazing. We've been barbecuing <laughs> pouring rain outside here in New York City. We're celebrating, of course, the 4th of July. And once again, our friends from Pork Barrel Barbecue are back. Yeah, that's right. Our friends Heath Hall and Brett Thompson here to tell us how to make some great barbecue chicken and a really interesting lemonade. This is not your father's lemonade. We're going to show you that in a second. But It's not your kid's lemonade. I yeah, guarantee true. you that. <laughs> that's right. So, Welcome back. We have some quick headlines for you people. The Undefeated portrays... Sarah Palin as a take charge kind of governor. Hello, he joins us this morning from Los Angeles. Ben, nice to see you. Happy Fourth of July. Hey, uh, you too. Well, what's going on here? Why is there this obsession in Hollywood with attacking uh, not just Sarah Palin but conservative women in general? Oh, well, because look, when I was asked about that, I think that was taken out of context. I would have left the earth because I didn't want to have to play this character for the next eight years of my life. She says <laughs> yeah, I started I'm sure this that's other really show. Yeah, that's really what it was about.
<laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what it was about. But yeah, right, Tina. We, 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 I'm sure that's true. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ben. Have a great day. Happy Fourth as well, you Ben. Too. Absolutely. The Casey Anthony trial is getting underway. The Good Sunday morning to you. It is July 3rd. I'm Ainsley Earhart filling in for Allison this morning, and we have a lot. Good morning. What Good morning. do you expect to see? I mean, this is really the last chance. Testimony last regarding those evidence. searches for chloroform. Of course, Cindy Anthony's, Cindy Anthony, Casey's mother, said it was her who searched for it. On Casey's computer, testimony from her employer says not so fast. She was at work during those hours. How important is that? As house right now, because they're on Phil Keating live outside the Orlando. Just getting word from the courthouse uh, there that they can, in fact, rule in uh, favor of uh, accidental drowning. And Jennifer, yes. I have to get your perspective on this because, as a consultant to the Casey Anthony defense team, I think you're in a unique position here. I mean, we saw the opening statements that Peter was just referring to. Now, as Peter says, this hangs like a sword of Damocles over them. How do they come back out? and try to convince this jury that that's not the case anymore. You know, it's interesting because I think... Oh, mouth. No, it doesn't, but we didn't have to prove accidental drowning. They had to prove murder, and unfortunately, they don't have a lot of the things that they need. They weren't able to prove cause of... minute recess in the, in the case right now. Uh, we've got a live look at the courtroom. So with about five minutes to go, let me get back to you, We're Kelly. We're looking at... Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but this is the flag that has the eagle, which indicates it's a recess right now. So, Kelly, as we get back to you, we've talked about these things, the duct tape and whatnot. How important does this make the behavior of Casey Anthony, the partying, the not calling the police for 31 days, the acting as if life was grand, in fact, getting life is beautiful tattooed? How important is all of this for the closing arguments? It's absolutely huge, and it's interesting because I respectfully disagree with both of my colleagues. She's done. He did not shift the burden successfully. Jose Baez put it out there. There's no credible evidence of anything he put out in his opening. And right now, you look at, she's out partying. She didn't report her daughter's death, even if it was accidental, which no parent would do. If your child is dead, you're devastated. You're not out getting tattoos. You're not out partying. You're not out having fun. I don't care. It is it is fascinating, and you know we're living in this sort of CSI world right now, guys. I'll just throw this out to the panel, but the jury now entering back into that courthouse, and they're all seated. Let's uh, listen in once again. Stay recognized, President.